Hi everyone. Welcome to the third lecture of the series on sliding mode control. In this lecture, we will discuss the first order sliding mode control of linear systems. We start with the sliding mode control of linear systems with some examples. Then we move on to the generalization of SMC for linear systems. And finally, we discuss a particular approach called regular form approach, which is used for SMC of linear systems. Let's consider the linear time invariant or LTA system as given in equation number 1 in which x is the state vector which is an n-dimensional vector, u is the control input vector which is an m-dimensional vector, a is the system matrix which is an n by n matrix and b is the input matrix which is an n by m matrix. We assume that the system is controllable and the rank of b is equal to m. This assumption basically implies that we can control the system from any initial state to any desired state using the control input U and the matrix B has full column rank or in other words the columns of the matrix B are independent. Now we select the switching function as in equation number 2. This is the general form of the switching function for state feedback based SMC. Here M is the parameter matrix which contains the coefficients of this linear switching function and we assume M is of full row rank. In other words, the rank of the matrix M is equal to small letter M. And the sliding surface is defined by S of X equal to 0, which gives Mx equal to a constant C, where C is equal to M into XR. This is in the form of a linear equation, and therefore this sliding surface is in the form of a hyperplane. Now, to ensure finite time reachability, the eta reachability condition should be satisfied. And we require s dot should be equal to minus k into signum of s, where k into signum of s will be on this form, so which has like small m number of elements, which is corresponding to each control input. And based on the sign of each of these switching variables, the control will switch us. So here this k will be a vector which contains each of these switching gains, and s will be a vector which is containing each of these sliding variables. And from the switching function, we have s dot equal to m into x dot in which we can substitute for the state equation and this we can equate with the desired value of s dot from the neta reachability condition and by equating this with this and solving for u we get u is equal to minus mb inverse max minus mb inverse k signum of s as an example we can consider a third order single input system as given in equation number seven Sliding variable is chosen as in equation number 8. So here we are considering a single input system. Therefore, the sliding variable will be a scalar valued. And for the sliding variable, we equate s equal to 0, which gives 2 into x1 plus 3 into x2 plus x3 equal to 0. Or in other words, x3 equal to minus 2x1 minus 3x2. This is in the form of a linear equation. And this gives the sliding surface as a plane. Now if we substitute for x3 in these first two equations, we have x1 dot equal to x2 and x2 dot equal to x3. Instead of x3, we can substitute minus 2x1 minus 3x2. So this will give us x1 dot equal to x2, x2 dot equal to minus 2x1 minus 3x2. So this will be the resultant dynamics if the state is in this sliding surface. Now the neta reachability condition gives s dot equal to 2x1 dot plus 3x2 dot plus x3 dot. So here we can substitute for x1 dot, x2 dot and x3 dot. This will result in this equation. This we can equate with minus k sigma of s and solve for u which gives u as in equation number 12. Now we can consider a third order multi input system with uh, two inputs. So here basically we have added one more input which is u2 and this will add one more column to the B matrix. And for u2, we select the sliding variable as in equation number 14 with m2 as given here. And the neta reachability condition gives s2 dot is equal to this. And this we can equate to minus k2 signum of s2 and solve for u2, which gives the control input u2 as in equation number 15. And the sliding variable for u1 is selected as in equation number 16, where m1 is this matrix. And here also by using the neta reachability condition, we require s1 dot should be equal to minus k1 sigma of s1. And this we can solve for u1, which gives u1 as in equation number 18. Now the design of u1 and u2 can be combined using vectors in which we define the switching function s of x like this, where s1 and s2 are the two sliding variables. 
which are like M1 into X and M2 into X. Where M1 and M2 are these two row vectors. And we have S dot is equal to MAX plus MBU, which should be equal to minus K sigma of S in order to satisfy NETA reachability condition. And solving this for U gives the control input as here. Now we can simulate this system using this control law. And figure one shows the state trajectory of the system using this uh, control law in which the system starts from this initial state and move towards origin. So here we can see both of these riding surfaces as green color and yellow color. We can see that these riding surfaces are plain. So initially the state will start from this point and it move towards the sliding surface corresponding to S2, which is shown in green color. And once it hits the sliding surface and start moving towards origin, where it hits the second sliding surface for S1, which is the yellow one. After that, it moves towards origin through the intersection of both of these sliding surfaces. Here this figure 2 shows the response of the system for this sliding mode control law, where we can see the plot of the states which are converging to origin. This plot shows the sliding variables which are also converging to origin. And here is the control input 1 and here is the control input 2, which starts switching once the system state reaches the sliding surface. Or in other words, the sliding variable S becomes 0. Next, we move on to the generalization of SMC for linear systems. First, we discuss the reduced order dynamics of LTA systems under SMC. Here we can show that under SMC, the LTA system achieves reduced order dynamics. For that, we consider an LTA system as given in equation number 20. During siding mode, the average control input or the equivalent control input is as given in equation number 21, which is obtained by solving S dot equal to 0 with this dynamics. Now, if we substitute this U EQ instead of U in this equation, we have X dot equal to AX plus B into this term, which we can simplify into X dot equal to AEQ into X, where AEQ is equal to this term. And M into AEQ will be this term. So here this MB and MB inverse will cancel. So it will be like M minus M into A. So this will be zero. So let lambda i be the eigenvalues of AEQ and V i be the eigenvector. Then we have M into AEQ is equal to zero, which is obtained from here. This means that M into AEQ into V i is equal to zero. Since VI is an eigenvector, we have AEQ into VI is equal to lambda i into VI. So this gives that M into lambda i VI is equal to 0. And here this lambda i is a scalar. So this we can rewrite as M into VI is equal to 0. This means that the reduced order dynamics will be decided by the matrix AEQ. And the eigenvectors of AEQ will be belongs to the null space of the matrix M. We had selected the matrix M as a full row rank matrix with the small m number of rows and n number of columns. So the null space of the matrix M will be of order n minus m. This implies that the reduced order dynamics will be of order n minus m, where n is the number of states and m is the number of control inputs. Next, we discuss the invariance of SMC to match the uncertainties. And for that, we consider an LTA system with a disturbance as in equation number 24. Here D is the disturbance, which is assumed to be in the column space of the input matrix B. Or in other words, the disturbance D can be spanned by the column vectors in the matrix B. And this condition we call as the matching condition. So we say that the disturbance is matched. Now the equivalent control for the LTA system is as given in equation number 25, which is obtained by solving for S dot equal 0 with the system dynamics as given here. And if we substitute this UEQ instead of the control input U in this equation, we obtain X dot as in equation number 26. And for match disturbance, we have D is equal to B into D bar. And if we substitute this for the D in this equation and simplify, we can obtain equation number 27, where we obtain X dot equal to AEQ into X, where AEQ is this matrix which is obtained as the last slide. So here we can see that the disturbance time D is not appearing in this reduced order dynamics. This means that the system is not affected by the disturbance during the sliding mode. And this we call as the invariance feature of SMC to match the uncertainties. Next, we discuss the disturbance decoupling feature of SMC, which is a similar concept to the invariance to match the uncertainty. And in the sliding mode, we have S of X equal to zero, 
and the state trajectory will be decided by m into x equal to zero. The states x which satisfy this condition are belongs to the null space of the matrix M. Therefore, in sliding mode, the state trajectory will be constrained to the null space of M. And we have the matrix M has small m number of rows and n number of columns. Therefore, the null space of M is of dimension n minus m, and this will be the sliding surface. Now, from the matching condition, we have the disturbance vector will be evolves in the input space. In other words, it will be evolves in the column space of B, which is an m-dimensional subspace. So here we can see that the sliding surface is an n minus m-dimensional subspace, and the disturbance vector will be in an m-dimensional subspace. Now, by proper selection of m, we can make the null space of m to be orthogonal to the column space of B. Then, during sliding mode, the system dynamics will be insensitive to disturbance since the component of the disturbance vector along the sliding surface is zero. In that case, we can say that the disturbance is decoupled since the disturbance vector is evolving in this space and the state vector will be evolving in this space. And we can achieve disturbance decoupled in the case of matched uncertainty. And for achieving disturbance decoupling, we can have a particular form of SMC design, which is called as the regular form. And this will be discussed next. In regular form approach, the state equation is transformed into a convenient form for SMC design. And if the rank of the matrix B is equal to M, then we can use a coordinate transformation of this form, which transforms the system dynamics as in equation number 29. Here A bar will be this matrix, and B bar will be this matrix. Here the transformation P is chosen in such a way that the P inverse B matrix has the first n minus m rows as zero. And this form we call as the regular form and which is suitable for designing the SMC control law. Now in the transformed coordinate, the state equation will be as in equation number 30. Here XA is the first n minus m elements of the state vector X and xb is the remaining m elements of the state vector x in the transformed coordinates. And here we can see that there is no u appearing in this first term. This is because we obtained the first n minus some rows of the matrix b bar as zero. Now we define the sliding variable s as in equation number 31, and this will be the variable in the transformed coordinates, where m bar is equal to m into p. And during the sliding mode, s equal to zero, which will give m bar into x bar is equal to zero. And if we substitute for m bar and uh, x bar and solve, we obtain x b bar is equal to minus m b bar inverse m a bar x a bar. And to simplify the design, we select m b bar is equal to i m. And this gives x b bar is equal to minus m a bar x a bar. And by substituting x b bar in this first state equation, we obtain x a bar dot as in equation number 33, and this will be the closed loop system matrix. Then we can design the matrix MA for placing the eigenvalues of this system matrix at a desired location. And from MA, we can compute M bar, from which we can compute M as in equation number 34. Finally, we can compute the control input U using the Nita reachability condition, which gives U as in equation number 35. This particular design is called as the regular form approach, which can be used for designing SMC control law for linear systems. That completes this lecture. Thanks for listening.